Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because I simplify biomechanics here and also talk about lot of ortho topics which you can use in your daily practice. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of my notes and also put daily MCQs which can help you brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. So in this video, we are going to talk about the shoulder joint complex. This is the first video where I will be introducing you to different bones present in the shoulder joint complex. Then we will be talking about the joints that are form formed by these bones. And then we will be talking about the movements that occur at the shoulder joint. This will be a brief overview. So let's get started. So there are four bones that are present in your shoulder joint complex. That is the sternum, clavicle, your scapula and the humerus. So let us look at these bones first. So first is the sternum. The sternum is present on the anterior aspect between your ribs. And the parts of sternum are, the, this part is called as the manubrium sterni and this is the xiphoid process. So it is present over here and it articulates with your clavicle bone over here and it forms the sternoclavicular joint that is the SC joint. This joint connects your upper limb to your axial skeleton. The next bone is the scapula. Scapula is present on the posterior aspect like this. The glenoid fossa faces outward and it articulates with the clavicle over here at the acromion. So if you look at the posterior aspect of your scapula, this is your scapular spine and the scapular spine goes and forms an acromion process. This round structure that you can see over here is the glenoid fossa and this thing is the coracoid process of the scapula. This is the anterior side and this is the posterior side. So when this spine of the scapula goes and forms the acromion process, this acromion process goes and articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle over here. If you can see this articular part goes and articulates with the acromion process. So the clavicle articulating with the acromion process of the scapula is the second joint that is the acromioclavicular joint. So till now we saw the SC joint and the acromioclavicular joint, right? Now let's go on to the third bone and let's look at the articulation. So the third bone is the humerus which is present over here, the arm bone. And this humerus articulates with your glenoid fossa over here like this. And this is where the shoulder joint movement happens. This is the glenohumeral motion, right? It is a ball and socket type of joint and it contributes for two thirds of the mobility of the shoulder joint. So those were the three main joints at the shoulder joint complex that was the SC joint, the AC joint and the GH joint or glenohumeral joint. Apart from these three joints, there are two more joints which are called as the false joints. So these are the scapulothoracic joint and the second one is the suprahumeral joint. The scapulothoracic is the joint that is formed between the scapula and the, your thorax, the rib cage. So the articulation is not really true articulation the scapula moves on the thorax and this movement is kind of attributed to a joint and then it is called as the scapulothoracic joint. And the second joint is the suprahumeral joint. So your humerus articulates the glenoid, right? And the space above the humerus is also attributed to another joint or it's called as the uh, suprahumeral joint, which is also a false joint and we don't really consider it. So this might be a lot of information for a first time. So I just want to give you guys some tips so that you can remember these things better. So first was the sternoclavicular joint which was connecting your upper body to your axial skeleton, right? This is a very strong joint. Then was the AC joint. Now AC joint is clinically very important. Why? Because it is commonly seen in clinics and how to find out that there is a AC joint pathology. The most commonly chosen test is cross adduction test. That is you ask the patient to touch his affected arm hand to the other side and when he does that he'll have a pain over here at this point. So that is the AC joint pathology test. So SC joint, the AC joint 
and then the third true joint was the glenohumeral which is very commonly studied and i'm pretty sure you guys will remember that one and then the after the three main joints we also saw the scapulo thoracic joint where the scapula was articulating with the thorax and the supra humeral joint so now that we know about the all the joints let us see the movement that occur at the shoulder joint complex so there is 180 degree of flexion and 180 degree you can come back then posteriorly there is around 60 degree of extension apart from that there is 180 degree of abduction that is taking your arm outside and towards the body there is adduction so 180 degree of that and then there is internal and external rotation so this is your internal rotation of around 90 degrees and external rotation of around 90 degrees mostly external rotation is slightly more compared to the internal rotation so if i show it to you over here this would be the abduction adduction movement flexion and extension and internal and external rotation would be something like this where the humerus moves or rotates on the glenoid fossa so this movement that occurs the two third of the movement occurs at the glenohumeral joint that is this is the glenoid fossa and this is the humerus so the glenohumeral motion takes up the two third part of the motion and what about the other one third other one third is attributed to the scapulo thoracic so when you are doing an abduction movement it's not just your humerus moving like this along with the humerus your scapula also moves along with it and this is called as the scapulo humeral rhythm right so this is a very important concept that your scapula moves along with the humerus and the stability of both these components is very important for a smooth motion at the shoulder joint complex shoulder provides a lot of mobility to your upper limb but along with the mobility it comes with lot of stability problems that is it can get injured in different position and this stability is normally provided by your muscles so when your muscles are weak and the ligaments around your shoulder joint are also weakened it can lead to lot of injuries like your labrum tear your biceps tendon injury your rotator cuff tear and the list goes on so stabilizing the shoulder joint through your active and passive structures is very important to prevent injuries at the shoulder joint and this active structures are the muscles which provide a dynamic stability to your shoulder joint along with the static stability we we'll talk about this in our coming up videos we we'll talk about each joint in specific we'll talk about the structure and the function and then we will also look at the active structures how they provide the stability and how we can train them to prevent injuries that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you get notified every time i post a new video also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover thank you for watching